My bike has just hit the 5,000 kilometer mile? No. Mark. Mark? <laughs> I thought that meant that it would be a good time to do my review of the Royal Enfield Himalayan. What this review is trying to do is, rather than to give you all the technical specs, is to answer the question of, is the Himalayan a good bike for beginners and for people who want to go off-roading? Back in February I had just gotten my learner's permit and was looking for my very first motorbike. We saw an advert in the newspaper or a magazine that was this bike that I'd never heard of before. So we went to a local Enfield dealer, um, booked in a test ride, I loved it immediately and bought one like a week later. Now I've had it about seven, eight months, um, during which time I have taken it on road trips. I have lived on a farm for three months and used it every day. I have done a lot of off-roading with Harry, um, half of which we haven't even gotten to YouTube yet. So it's been through a lot. It's come up slightly scathed, which we'll get to, but largely has been pretty robust and has been, an, has been an incredible bike. The engine. The Himalayan has a 24 brake horsepower engine, which is not a lot. And I think that anyone who rides a Himalayan will tell you that it actually feels like less than that anyway. If you're buying a Himalayan to go fast and for motorways, you're probably buying the wrong bike. Um, what the Himalayan does have though, is a lot of torque. So it's great for going off-road and for beginners off-road. When another bike that's got higher power might end up sending a beginner careening off to the side or flipping their bike or just losing traction, the Himalayan will keep you under control and basically inspire you with a lot more confidence and make you feel like you're a much better rider than you probably really are. For me, that's been one of the reasons why I love the Himalayan so much and it's made a huge difference to my off-road riding. Another thing I wanted to mention is the suspension, which I think is really great on the Himalayan. Um, not only does it mean you get a really smooth ride, but also it helps you to maintain traction when you are going off-road. Something that I think this bike does really well at. Give me the clap. Stands. One of the things that I find the most annoying about the Himalayan is the side stand. It is far too long. Fucking bike. That's pretty, it's, it's got, a, it's got a, a tilt. I have dropped this thing dozens of times on the tiniest of inclines. With my tank open. Luckily, it does have a mid stand. So I found this hugely useful. Um, I've used it for bike maintenance or even just loading and unloading the bike and it's great. It does have its own problem though and that is that the Himalayan doesn't have great ground clearance as it is. Um, which isn't great for off-roading, as you can imagine. And then the mid-stand becomes the lowest part of the bike, so I find that I'm quite often scraping that. So, <laughs> it's got positives and negatives. It's, it's super useful, but you have to be cautious of that when you're riding. One interesting characteristic that you might have noticed if you've watched any of our earlier videos is this. That's the side stand warning. Apparently you can turn it off under the seat, um, but I think it's funny. Crash bars. So if you're gonna go off road, I absolutely recommend that you do get crash bars, um, but I cannot recommend these. These are terrible. Um, the slightest gust of wind will blow them over. You're right. uh, I actually spend a couple of times every time we go out just pulling them back straight again. Do get some, but go for an aftermarket set with a third point of contact. When you're going off-road, one of the basic adjustments you should be doing is to raise your gear lever. And that means that it's more comfortable for you to stand. Um, and what the Himalayan's got, which I think is great, is this little fine adjuster. And that means that you don't need to take off the whole gear lever every time you want to change the height. You can just turn a spanner. All right. Another quick point, the bike originally came with rubber tops on the foot pegs. I took them off pretty quickly because it's much better for off-roading. 
you might notice that my clutch lever is a bit shorter than normal. Um, I would recommend that if you do buy a Himalayan, you get some guards installed um, because these are pretty exposed as they are. Um, quick tip, also, if you're parking on a hill, I would also recommend not parking in neutral. If you are planning to drop the bike several times, maybe consider investing in enduro mirrors. Oh, my mirror's smashed. The instrument panel on the Himalayan is pretty straightforward and they've got rev clock, speed clock, gas <laughs> clock, Are you gonna do it? clock focus. <laughs> um, I will say though that the fuel gauge will already read empty when there's still five liters in of a 15 liter tank. Um, the temperature gauge they've got is way off and you might notice that my odometer says that I haven't done 5,000 kilometers yet. Um, I have. The reason it looks like I haven't done 5,000 kilometers yet is because of this cable. So this is the speedo cable um, and for about 300 kilometers it was completely snapped about a month ago. But I took it into Royal Enfield and they replaced it for free under warranty, which was great. I picked up the panniers when I bought the Himalayan as a part of the adventure pack, um, which meant I got panniers, crash bars and the wrecks. The panniers have been great. Um, really impressed with them. They're pretty simple things, um, but super cheap. I think I paid a thousand dollars for all three. The only thing that I would say about it is that these fasteners are not the best quality um, so you do find it a bit stiff getting them on and off um, and in fact actually they did suggest to not take them on and off too often uh, which we've ignored largely but besides that they've been fantastic um, they've put up with a few bashes and protected all my stuff which is good the Himalayan is just about the best looking bike that I know. Certainly in the dual sport market I think it is miles better looking than anything else. I love how rugged it looks, I love how I love that it's retro, I like all the exposed machinery. I really think it's a fantastic looking bike and one that people come up to me constantly to comment on. Um, I also think the looks are really practical. I really love these bars. So not only can you attach luggage or extra fuel onto the side of these really easily, but also it supports the entire instrument cluster and dash, which means that you don't have to have weight on your steering column, which is great. All of the stuff with the, this exposed engine, not that I've had to do much work on it, but it means that everything's really easily accessible. So when we had to fix the fuel tap, it was a two minute job to get it done and it looks great. I'm five foot seven and for me this bike is the perfect height. I've been on Harry's DR650 and the CRF250 and found that with both of them I'm on my tiptoes whereas the Himalayan is perfect if you're a little bit shorter. Also if you're going two up which we sometimes are because Harry sometimes doesn't have a bike uh, the back seat's great. It gives you a lot of height behind the first rider um, and I've never had a problem going on the back. One of the things about the bike though is that it's quite heavy, um, especially if you compare it to other bikes which feel much more maneuverable than the Himalayan. I do feel like the low seat height though counteracts this because you can very quickly get your feet secure on the ground if you're starting to feel that the bike's tipping. It does mean though that when you do drop it, it's a bit of a load to pick up again. For me to pick up again. For Harry to pick up again. <laughs> Why do we think that the Himalayan is a great bike for beginners trying to get into off-roading? Firstly, the price. You can take one of these home for 7,000 Australian dollars or about 4,000 pounds in the UK which is insanely good and if you look at what the Himalayan's competing against in the market other bikes are double that um, so you get a lot of bike for your money secondly the looks now this is going to be hugely subjective but for me that ended up being a big factor in why I picked the bike because I saw a photo of it in a magazine and fell in love 
I think it's a really distinctive bike, completely different to anything else Royal Enfield's certainly ever done, and really different to everything else that's around at the moment. Thirdly, and most importantly, is the capabilities off-road. I have always been inspired with confidence by the Himalayan, even on my very first rides off-road. I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface of what the bike's capable of, but it has never had a problem with anything I've thrown at it. And particularly with all that talk, you get the feeling that the bike will get you out of any sticky situation that you get yourself into. As a beginner, I would absolutely recommend the Himalayan for anyone getting into off-road riding, particularly if you're wanting something that can also do on-road and a bit of touring, because the Himalayan really hits the sweet spot for all those three. I hope you found this review useful. If you did, please hit like. If you want to see any more of my adventures on the Himalayan and Harry on the DR650, then hit subscribe. And we will see you next week for our usual weekly upload. Bye. Nailed it. Good.